So today, today we're going to be talking about center of mass. And the center of mass of the system is the point located by the position vector r, where r is related to the position vector r1, r2, r3, etc., of the particles in the system by relations. Now, I'm going to basically try to give you something like an example first before we actually dive into it so that you could understand what we're talking about with a concrete uh, example that can be stored in your head as like a reference, okay? So imagine if I had Here's my zero, here's my zero, and here's my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's say I have a pink mass right here at two, right? And let's say this mass here is two kilograms and it's located at two meters from my reference point zero and then I have a green ball right, let's say at six meters away right Oops. and then this one also has mass of two kilograms. Now, let's say these two spherical objects are connected with a very, very, very light, ultra strong, thin rod, right? And if I were to ask you to balance these two masses, where would you say you should place your fingers in order to balance this? Four. And how'd you get that magically? I mean, where'd you get that number? Four. I mean, you're right. But you just got it, right? Without even knowing physics, like about center of mass and stuff. You just knew it intuitively, right? Say four and say right here would be a good balance point for these two objects. And that makes sense. So this is the center of mass of the system of these two particles. Well, if you want to get mathy about this, we can actually do that and say the center of mass, this is the center of mass location, right? This is the center of mass location, can be defined by the mass of the first mass times the position of this first mass, mass of the second times the position of the second, and so on, okay? So... If you were to think about this as like mass one, mass two, mass three, because they can be different masses. They don't have to be exact same masses. Oops, two and three. So if I multiply the mass one times the position of that mass one plus mass two times position of that mass two and etc mass 3 times position of mass 3, add them all up, and then divide by the total mass. So this mass here is total mass. That is basically, right, mass 1 plus mass 2 plus mass 3 plus dot, 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 right? Just the total mass. So knowing this, we can say, oh, let's try this R sub CM for such system that we have here. It says M1 times R1 plus M2 times R2. 
whole thing divide by M1 plus plus M2, right? So let's see what that comes out to. M1 is 2 kilograms times MR1, which is 2 meters, plus M2 is also 2 kilograms. Maybe I should write, write down the times R2, which happens to be 6 meters. That whole thing divide by right, 2 plus 2. So 2 kilograms plus 2 kilograms. So let's see what we get. So R sub CM is equal to then 4 kilograms meters per second, or meters, I'm sorry, kilograms meters. Plus, here I get 12 kilograms meters, whole thing divided by 4 kilograms. When I add these two, I get 16 kilograms meters. Divide that by 4 kilograms. And guess what? These kilograms will cancel out giving you 16 over 4 meters, which is, well, 4 meters. So you were right. Right? You were right. So it looks like this formula works. So since this is the x direction, we'll call that x hat, right? This is x in meters. Right? We could call this y, but everything was in the x direction, so just worry about the x. So this will be 4 meters x hat, will be the center of mass of this system. That worked out well, right? So obviously, this looks too easy. So I'm sure we can switch it up by giving different masses here, first of all, right? We could put different masses. We don't even have to put these on the x-axis. We could have all over the place in the xy plane. Maybe even X, Y, Z space, like out here, like this, you know? And you can still find the center of mass of the whole system anywhere relative to a certain location. Now, this zero, you could put this anywhere you want at your convenience. So you could slide the whole axis right down here. It really doesn't change except for these numbers, you know? So sometimes it's easier to put it right at the one of the mass as zero then this thing will be 4, and then this will be 0, and this will be 4, and this will be 2 automatically. But in order to avoid the confusion, because if I don't give you the 0, anybody can put 0 anywhere they want, then I would have 24 different answers that are all correct. And it would just drive me crazy when I grade these. So I'll give you the 0, so you all have this, should have the same number. All right? But some people would like to put it at, like, you know, half. Why? I don't know. Some people like to do that. Or some people like to put it here, or they put it at pi. No, yeah, right? Don't do that. So I'm going to give you the zero. Now, now, you know the position function. If you know the position function, this is position, right? So this is also known as the position of center of mass, right? So this is the position of center of mass, right? So the position of the center of mass can be represented as certain function of time, if you want to. Then if you take a derivative of this position function, you'll get the velocity function, all right? So 
don't worry about you know derivatives right now but just those of you who are taking calculus if this position functions are function of time then take a derivative of each of those position functions and you'll get yourself a velocity function out of this deal so the velocity of center of mass right so this whole system could be traveling like this or like this whole system could be traveling like this then we can calculate the velocity of this center of mass okay so velocity of center of mass can be defined as m1 times v1 plus m2 times v2 plus m3 plus times v3 etc etc you're not doing anything right <laughs> not kidding uh sometimes just sometime today because i want to okay compare sounds good yeah thank you this whole thing divided by the total mass now this total mass again is we represent it with capital m here but this capital m represents m1 plus m2 plus m3 plus etc etc right so this is the velocity of center of mass and of course if this thing were to accelerate then we take a derivative of this and we'll get our acceleration function and our acceleration a sub cm is really nothing more than just m1 a1 right plus m2 a2 plus m3 a3 etc etc right whole thing over the total mass m right so the net external forces here Right? So if I add up all these external forces right, and divide that by the total mass, you get yourself the acceleration of the center of mass. Okay. So just by looking at this, like this is F sum of all force one, this is sum of all force two, plus this is sum of all force three. The whole thing is equal to the net force, right? That net force basically is simply that. So it's kind of repetitious, you know, but so it's pretty easy, actually. All right, all right. Let me see if you can show me that you understood what we did here. And I'll give you about five to ten minutes to see if you can try this. And I will pause this. I'll meet you back at ten. All right. So let's take a look at this. Okay, let's take a look at this. So here we can say, now this is along the x-axis only, so we don't have to worry about two dimensions here. So we just have to worry about just all the R's along the X only. So X sub CM, okay, you could say R sub CM. It's just simply just X sub CM in our case right now is equal to, right, M1 R1 plus M2 R2, whole thing over m1 plus m2 right so here m1 happens to be 5.97 times 10 to the 24th times r1 is just 1r plus m2 is 7.97 three five times ten to the twenty second times sixty one r 
whole thing over, right? 5.97 times 10 to the 24 plus 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd. All right, so here we have 5.97 times 10 to the 24 R plus, right? If you multiply this out, that's going to be pretty big. Okay, so here we have 7.35 EE 22nd times 61, and I get 4.4835. Times 10 to the 24 R, right? Whole thing over, right? When I add these two, what do I get? I get 6.0435, right? Times 10 to the 24. So when I add these up, I get 10.4535 times 10 to the 24 over 6.0435 times 10 to the 24. And I get something like 1.73 R is my center of mass of this two particle system. Now these particles are actually pretty big. Matter of fact, these particles are one being Earth and other being the moon. And the center of mass of our Earth moon system is 73% of our radius of the Earth. So this is where the radius of the Earth from here to here is, and it is the balance point of Earth-Moon system is inside the Earth, at 27% underneath the Earth's surface. That's pretty wild when you think about it. So if I were to have this Earth-Moon system with like a very, very ultra-strong, thin, massless rod, right? And it's connected. And then I like to throw this up in space, spin it. It would spin, rotate about this point right here. You know? This was pretty wild. So when we look at our Earth-Moon system, when, when, it, when it travels across you know, galaxy while it's going around the sun. The Earth Moon system sort of like wobbles as it goes. Because this is where it turns. It doesn't turn at the center of mass of the Earth, it turns at the 73% from the center of Earth. You know, it's pretty nice. Pretty wicked, I would think. Thought. So, do these masses and distance look familiar? Yes. Y'all, hmm. y'all. Right. Notice the center of mass of two-body Earth-Moon system is almost outside of the mass Earth. Right. This is why the Earth wobbles and orbits. So learn more about this. Right. So. It is inside the Earth, right? Well, it's a surprise, you know. Well, okay. Cool. Let's move on to the next one. Now we have system of particles in 
XY plane. Now this thing is all messed up. I don't know what happened, but these arrows should be like moved over to. So this is actually R1, right? This is R1. This is R2. This is R3. Okay. Now you have to break these up into its X and Y components. Because everything is going to be in X, Y plane. Now they want to know what this is. So this is basically the R sub C M, and we have no idea where that is. So these are just question marks, right? These are question marks and question mark. We don't know where that is. So the location of R1 happens to be 1, 4, it looks like, right? So R1 happens to be 1, 4. R2 seems like R2 looks like 4, 3. And R4 looks like 5 comma 1. Okay? So we have to break these up into their X and Y components. So let's figure out what's going on with R sub X, right? Sub CM. Or simply just X sub CM. I want to know where the center of mass of my three particle system is at X sub CM. That is simply M1 times R1 in the X direction only, right? plus, right? plus M2 times R2 in the X direction only, right? plus is going to be M3 times R3 in the X direction only. So, and then we have M1 plus M2 plus M3. Is that, is that understandable, right? Therefore, therefore, if we were to plug in these values, right, Let's see what we get. Right? So M1 happens to be 5 kilograms times R1x is just 1 meter in the x direction. M2 is 4 kilograms times R2x happens to be just 4 meters in the x direction. And M3 happens to be 3 kilograms. And my R3x happens to be 5 meters. And of course, these are all along the x direction. Right? So all this are in x direction so these are all x hats here i have five kilograms plus four kilograms plus three kilograms all right so if we work it out if we work it out five Kilograms times one is five kilograms meters plus four kilograms times four meters is 16 kilograms meters plus three kilograms times five meters is 15 kilograms meters. Whole thing divide by looks like 12. Right? Looks like 12 kilograms. So if I add them all up, right, 
what do I get? I get 21, 36, right? Do I get 36? 36 kilograms times meters over, over 12 kilograms X set. And guess what? Kilograms will cancel out and you'll give me three meters X hat as my X sub CM. Now let's do the Y's. Okay, let's do the Y's. So here we got R sub Y CM or simply Y sub CM is equal to, right? So we get the logistics of this, right? M1, oh, uh, wrong color. So M1, R1, Y, right? Plus, right? M2, R2, Y, plus, right? Uh, M3, R3, Y, right? M3, M2, and we got M1. Now, all we have to do is plug these values in and see what we get, right? M1, again, is 5 kilograms times R1, Y is 4 meters plus plus um, M2, which is 4 kilograms times, sorry, R2, Y, which is 3 meters and then three kilograms for M3 times R3Y is just one meter. And all this is basically Y hat. Right? And then here I get five kilograms plus four kilograms plus three kilograms. Again, comes out to be 12 kilograms. So here, I get 20, 20 kilograms meters plus, plus uh, 12 kilogram meters plus 3 kilogram meters. Whole thing over 12 kilograms. Y hat. Therefore, when I add these up, I get 30, 35, 35 kilograms meters over 12 kilograms Y hat. So my Y sub CM comes out to a little less than 3, looks like. So 35 divided by 6. is equal to, I get 2.92, right, meters y hat. So, so what happens? Well, now I can say my R sub CM, right, my R sub CM, is equal to right, x sub cm plus y sub cm, which is 3.0 x hat plus 2.92 y hat meters as my r sub cm. That's the thought.
that bad, right? Oh, that wasn't hard. All right. So, now that we know how to do this, I'm going to come back to this after we do some problems. And then we'll do the harder ones later. So, if you can, See if you can do this problem. Okay. See if you can do this problem. And this problem. Now think of these as a point particles. So the mass of this box is located right here. And mass of this box is located right here. And mass of this box is located right here. So Instead of a box here, right, these are just point particles located at the center. And they're all along the x-axis. So you could treat it like that. Okay? And I will give you the reference point, right? Zero is right here. This is my zero. So that we all have the same numbers. So this is my zero. So the location of my first mass is actually going to be LO over 2. Does that make sense? So this will be half LO. Okay. Find out where this is and find out where this is. So this is your R1. And this is your R2. Right? And this is your R3. Okay, so hopefully that helps. And then for this one, right, you got empty car has 1,050 kilogram car, right? Center of mass is 2.5 meters behind the front of the car. So I'm going to show you where that zero is going to be again. So you guys can actually have the pretty much the same. So here is my... Car, right? That's my Porsche Cayenne. I wish, <laughs> right? So here, here, this is the car right here. I'm going to consider this to be my zero. Right at the front bumper is my zero. So here is my zero. Okay. The center of mass for the car is here, let's say. This is the center of mass of the car. And that is my R1. And the mass of the car, right, which is M1, is 1050 kilograms. Now, how far from the car will the center of mass be when two people sit in the front seat and two in the, from the front of the car and three people in the back, right, and assume each person is 70 kilograms. So we have two people sitting here which is 
I'm going to put two masses here like that, okay? And this is R2, which happens to be uh, 2.8 meters. Right? R1 is 2.5 meters, right? And then we have three people sitting in the back, right? Typical mainline family, right? So this here is, whoops, I went a little too far. So this here right, is my R3, and that is 3.9 meters here, okay? So see if you can figure out where the center of mass of the whole system is after all the family members get inside. And each mass is 70 kilograms, 70 kilograms, 70, 70, 70, okay? So let me see if you guys can do this. I'm going to give you guys breakout room or... That don't even go to me. All right, I'll, I'll pause it here, and I'll meet you back at around maybe 15 minutes later. So give it a shot. For number 21, let me give you a hint. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. So mass is equal to density times volume. And of course, volume of a cube is equal to length cubed, okay? So hopefully that helps. All right, let's go over this, these two problems. So here for the first problem, you could think of these two masses here, these two occupants as just one mass of 140 kilograms if you want to, right? And you can also think of these three occupants in the back as 210 kilograms as like one mass we're looking at it only like in one dimensional way really okay so with that you know understanding let's take a look at what happens if we could figure out the r sub cm in the x direction only really right so it's just x sub cm is equal to right we have basically the mass of the car, right? So the mass of the car times R sub CM X for the car, right? Plus, plus, we have the mass of the two occupants, right? So we could say, if you want to, uh, 2M, right, times r sub x 2, right? Plus, plus, we have r m3, which is 3m, times r sub x 3, okay? Whole thing divide by, whole thing divide by the mass of the car, plus, you know, twice, twice the mass, plus three times the mass, right? So, hopefully, now we should be able to just plug some numbers in and get some numbers out here. So here, the mass of the car happens to be, um, One thousand fifty kilograms, right? 
times the location of the car's center of mass happens to be 2.5 meters. Then the two occupants in the front is really just 140 kilograms, right, times 2.8 meters. And then the occupants in the back are 3 times 70, or just 210 kilograms, and their location is 3.9 meters. Okay? The whole thing divide by, right, 1050 plus 140 plus 210. So if you work this out, I think you get something like um, 2625 plus um, 392 plus um, 819 whole thing over uh, 1400. So if you work it out, you get X hat if you want to, you get something like uh, 3836 over 1400, which comes out to 2.74 meters X hat. That's where the center of mass is for this whole system, all right? So it's still going to be behind the car's center of mass, but in front of, but in front of the two occupants. Sorry. All right? So, so that's where the center of mass of the whole system will be with five occupants inside the car, inside the Porsche thing. And, uh, all right? So that was easy one. That wasn't that hard. But this one seems like it's a little like, well, you know, a little complicated here. Don't be afraid. We just stick with the rules and usually it works out. Okay? So we know this one has mass one, mass two, mass three. So we'll just stick with that. So here's my mass one, here's my mass two, and here's my mass three. Okay, and all we need to do is find these masses in terms of rho time volume. Okay, so since mass one is equal to, now they're made with same uniform material, so all my densities are the same. So rho is same for all three cubes. The volume of this first mass is just L not cubed. Does that make sense? Right? And the location of my R1 is really just L not over 2 or, or 0 0.5 L not. Right? So that's easy. My second mass, my second mass, M2 is equal to rho times, the side happens to be 2L0, so 2L0 cubed is what we have, and that's really just 8 rho L0 cubed, right? Because if you do this, you're going to get rho times... 8L0 cubed, because 2 times 2 times 2. And my R2 happens to be, here's 1, and since this is 2, half of 2 is just another 1, so I have R2 is just 2L0. Are we in agreement? Okay. 
And then M3 is really nothing more than just rho times 3 L0 quantity cubed, which is 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27 L0 cubed, right? So 27 rho L0 cubed is what the mass 3 is. And R3 happens to be, well, is 1, and then 2 more is 3, and then since this is 3, half of that is 1 and a half. So 3 plus 1 and a half is 4.5. Are we okay with that? All right. So we just stick with the rules. And the rules are, okay, well, x sub cm is equal to, it's really nothing more than just m1 r1, right, plus m2 r2, right, plus M3, R3, whole thing divide by, right, M1 plus M2 plus M3. All right. So, if we were to substitute all these values in here, what do we get? And that is equal to, M1 is really nothing more than just rho L0 cubed times R1, which is 0.5 L0. Plus, M2 is just 8 rho L0 cubed times 2 L0 plus M3 is 27 rho L0 cubed times 4.5 L0. Whole thing divide by rho L naught cubed plus eight rho L naught cubed plus twenty seven rho L naught cubed. You can see where this is going now, right? Looks like I could factor out rho. L naught cubed from top and rho L naught cubed from the bottom. So hopefully you can see that when we factor those out, right, rho L naught cubed, right, from the top and rho L naught cubed from the bottom, and let's see what we get the top and bottom. For the top, we have right, 0 0.5 L0 plus we have 8 times 2 L0, which is 16 L0 plus 27 times 4.5. What's 27 times 4.5? That looks like 121.5 L0. That whole thing divide by, here I get 1, this is 1, plus 8 plus 
27. So now this looks like L naught, L naught cube should be able to cancel out nicely. And if I add up all the top stuff, what do I get? I get, and I add up this plus this plus that, I get 122 plus 16, so 138, L naught, whole thing over, here I get 9 plus 27, I get 36. So my L naught remains at L naught. So my X of CM comes out to, I get something like 3.833 L naught as my center of mass of the whole system. And that is, here's three, so here's four, so it's around here somewhere inside the big cube, right? So that is my X of CM of the whole system, which is 3.833. Is that good? All right. I think um, I think that was good. Okay. Yeah, I think that was good. All right then. Seems like people still haven't handed in a lot of the materials. Uh, I think they're all playing that fifty-five game. I wish you guys can do some effort and get some credit where credit is due. All right. So here, this is done. Now, this looks rather complicated, but when we actually go over these problems here, it shouldn't be that bad. All right. However, I'm not going to do that today because it feels like we're not going to have enough time to finish. So, um, yeah, what I'll do is, I'll do that next time, and for now, if you want to, what you can do is, you can finish up with what you need to hand in, and then I'll, I'll let you give you a little break since we didn't take any break. All right, so I'll stop the lecture here for today. And then Wednesday, we'll do that other crazy stuff with like holes cut out, okay? So Wednesday, we'll do this stuff. All right, and then once we're done with that, Friday, I'm gonna give you a little center of mass quiz, just like two problems, okay? Very small, something like homework problem type. And then we'll, we'll just have assessment on that. All right, all right, I'll stop here.